Anytone reveals a brand new DMR mobile radio that incorporates tri-band, 2 meters, 220, and 440, into a mobile package, which now includes digital APRS as well as analog APRS. Let's take a look at it right now. Shut up and sit down. Ham Radio 2.0, where we do reviews, news, and how-tos of things that are new in amateur radio. Well, guess what? This is brand new. I just learned about this. The guys at Gigaparts actually sent this to me. And I went and did some checking around. And the only place that actually has it listed right now is PowerWorks. So PowerWorks.com has this brand new Anytone ATD578UV3+. Now, the old one was referred to as the UV3 Pro. Basically, there was four models of the Anytone mobile DMR radio prior to this release, okay? The four models, the, the biggest one was called the Pro model. It incorporated tri-band, 2 meters, 220, and 440, or you could change that model to be a Part 90 certified radio where it would open up the 2 meter and 440 band, but it would squelch the 220 band because you can't have 220 in a Part 90 radio. So there's a couple different settings you can play around with in there. The base model had just tri either tri-band or Part 90 dual band. There was one model that had Bluetooth only. There was one model that had GPS only, digital APRS, but no analog APRS. And there was the Pro model that had both digital, APR digital APRS and GPS and Bluetooth. And the Pro model is the one I've done. I did a review on that a while back. It's a great radio to date. It is my favorite mobile DMR radio that is out in the market right now for hams, at, at least for hams, because it does incorporate dual band and 220, even though it's only five watts. So PowerWorks is now advertising, and it says that it's in stock. If we go over here to their website right here, it says clearly that it is in stock. It is the Anytone AT D578 UV3 Plus DMR tri-band mobile amateur radio with AM aircraft receive, GPS, and Bluetooth. I don't believe the last one had AM, uh, AM aircraft received, that I recall. So VHF, uh, UHF, Tri-Band Digital Analog Part 97, DMR Amateur Motor ra Radio Transceiver with a 1.77-inch color TFT display, Bluetooth, GPS, and DMR roaming. Has DMR roaming? Yeah, it's not really the same kind of DMR roaming that you would think of when doing... Motorola stuff. It doesn't have the Motorola, the patent, the Motorola patented IP site connect roaming is not available on, on another manufacturer because it is patented. <laughs> it's patented because it's patented, but there are certain ways to let it roam around to repeaters uh, other than that. So I'm not exactly sure how they pull the repeaters to roam to different talk. Roaming basically means when you're driving a lawn and you're talking on this repeater on a certain talk group when you move out of range of that repeater and you move to the next one it'll pick up that same talk group and just keep going like a cell tower kind of but i think that your repeaters all have to be programmed exactly the same for that to work and that creates a big problem i don't know more research is needed on that but it does include the uh, Air am aircraft band from 108 to 136 megahertz on receive only it's about a 60 dollars larger price tag right now Kind of disappointed that they don't have a bigger screen on it, honestly. But um, these are these are four different screens here that you can set. APRS info, uh, APRS menu. This is your normal screen at the top left corner. That's where it would be right there. Kind of uh, the, the, really the only thing disappointing about this radio and the previous model was the size of the screen. The size of the screen on this model is is basically the same exact size of the screen as it is on their HT series. This is the UV, UV plus two. This is the newest one, the one that holds 500,000 contacts. The new mobile radio now holds 500,000 contacts too. Let's look through some of these features here because I'm curious to see what you guys think if it's worth an extra 60 bucks. So it has everything that the original one had. It claims that it'll do analog APRS capable, okay? Probably just the same one that's built into the new HT that's that claims to be analog APRS capable, which I have not toyed with yet. I've toyed with a little bit, but I haven't recorded the video on. I'll put it that way. High power output, 50 watts, 25 watts, 10 watts. 
power outputs. I don't, but down, okay, so that's a little bit misleading. It says high power output, 50 watts, 45 watts on UHF, 25, 10, and 1 select. So it has four power levels. Bluetooth connectivity to some devices, see below. But down here, if we scroll down, okay, so this is good. 4,000 channels, 10,000 talk groups, and 500,000 subscribers. Complete worldwide database base from DMR Mark. This is not correct. The database no longer exists on DMR Mark. It exists on radioid.net. So that's old information. PowerWorks is not up to date on that, apparently. Also, right here, actually, they might have just copied pasted this from Anytone. Anytone may be the ones not up to date. I don't know, but they should check that because that is not correct. The database is no longer on DMR Mark. Hadn't been there for two or three years or more. This right here, power levels on VHF. 144 to 148 is 50, 25, 10, and 1. 220 is still 5 and 1 watts. So there's only two levels, and the top level is still only 5 watts. That's disappointing. That's disappointing. For an extra 60 bucks, basically, I well, for an extra 60 bucks, I would expect more. Uh, UHF does 45 watts on high. 250 zones, that's pretty much the same. Bandwidth is both narrow and wideband for analog. Import the CPS other stuff like this. So basically what they're saying here is that if you want to pay an extra $60 for this radio. Now this, I'm not saying it is or it's not worth it. If it was a true tri-band radio that did 25, maybe 20, 20 watts minimum, 25 watts preferably on 220, that would be worth it. That would be worth it. I would be I would be on board with that. But right now, the only thing that they're offering you for an extra $60 over the Pro model that exists today, the one I've done the video on, is an increased capacity from 300,000 to 500,000 contacts in the database, which today we don't need that because the database right now is only around 200,000 contacts. Now, it, it is more future-proof. It is something you will need later. Quite frankly, I would be surprised if the original model is not able to be upgraded because that's just a matter of memory and the mobile radio is large so you can put a larger chip in it. It seems to me like that's something that would be easy to upgrade. I don't know. They're giving you, they're claiming analog APRS and larger database, contact database and talk group capacity for an extra $60. I don't know. I don't know. I would want to know how well the APRS works. I'd want to know how well the APRS works. I'd want to know if it can run APRS in the background at the same time that you're monitoring analog APRS. I want to know if it will run analog APRS in the background while you're driving down the road talking on the DMR radio into repeaters or, or maybe your hotspot. Those of you who run mobile radios with an external antenna, but you talk into a hotspot, I don't understand you folks. Nothing wrong with that. I do that myself on road trips. But if I'm at home, I'm using the local repeaters. Now, if you don't have local repeaters, obviously you don't have, you don't have that option. But if you have all these local repeaters, I know guys in DFW who do this, guys in North Texas, they have, there's 15, 18 different repeaters throughout North Texas between between Dallas Fort Worth and the Oklahoma border, and they drive around with their mobile radios in their car talking on their hotspot. I don't get that. But to each his own. The great thing about amateur radio is there's plenty of room for everybody. <laughs> but if you're if if you're on a road trip, there the, the hotspot is very useful. But we're still limited to five watts on 220. And will the analog APRS work in the background while you're actually using the digital DMR and talking on the radio? I don't know. Sure, it'll work on it'll work on digital APRS. Sure, of course it will, assuming that your hotspot is set up for that or your local repeater is set up for that. Most DMR radios will work on digital APRS. Even if they don't have true APRS, there's a way to finagle that and go in there and say, hey, key up on this and send this information. Pystar has GPS, APRS GPS stuff built into it. So you can you can set Pystar up to report to APRS.fi. But it's all done through digital. I want to know if this radio is going to work on analog APRS, catching digipeters and eye gates and, and nodes in your local area and actually report it over analog to APRS.fi. Good question. Good question. I don't know the answer. Perhaps we will find out together. So cool looking radio. 
Wish the screen was bigger. Wish the 220 capability was bigger. But we'll see. Um, we'll see what happens in the coming weeks. Let me know if you guys are interested in this. What you think about it? If you're gonna go out and pick one up already, or if you've already done that, let me know. Put a comment below. Catch you next time.